Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try to fix up these four Atari 2600 games. So I recently bought this and it came with six games, a couple of controllers as well. But out of the six games, only two games works. Yars, Revenge and also Combat. By far, so far out of them two, I think Combat is just a really good playable game. But anyway, you can see Yars, Revenge working up there absolutely fine. Now I won't go through all four, but if I take this one out here and if I was to stick in something like Kung Fu Master, put it in there, turn it on, it just does nothing. And that is the same with all of the others as well. I'll just do one more. Uh, let's do Chopper Command. Turn it on. Does more, but it's still not doing what it needs to do. Yeah, so uh, let's take them apart and see if we can see what's wrong with them. Maybe they just need cleaning. This one here just looks like it's all completely mangled up. It looks like it's been pushed in the wrong way and forced down. So there might not be anything wrong with that one apart from rearranging the insides. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the inside looks like. Does it just look like, for example, a Mega Drive cart? Or is there other stuff going on? Is it just a chip? Or do we have loads of different componentry in there? Let's find out. Ah, so here we have them. Now, I can see here that there's definitely a screw hole here and here. And it looks like on the Kung Fu one as well, it looks like there's a screw hole here and here. I thought I may be able to peel the sticker, but look, I just did the top corner and then you can see it started to go all wrinkly. Yeah, so even if I was to add heat to that and try to peel it, it would just be wrinkled all over. So I think it'd probably be better just to have holes in it rather than the whole thing be wrinkly. This one here, I can't feel any screw holes on it. So I don't know what's going on there. That might be glued, possibly. This one here just looks really, really cheap and lightweight. This is Activision. They're all made by different people. Parker Brothers, Activision. Oh no, Activision, Activision. I wonder why this one looks so cheap compared to those ones there. I mean, that feels nice. This feels lightweight and horrible. But look, this one here is just ready to fall apart. Oh, there we go. Oh. That's a letdown. Well, it's nice that it's Ghostbuster written on it, but uh, oh, I was expecting to have a bit more circuitry on there. All right, well, uh, this one, maybe the others are different, but this one is very, very, very simple. It's just a chip, and from the legs of the chip, it just goes down to here, and it looks like all the top pins are on this side, so all the bottom pins must be on this side here. So this one here, you think, is just going down to... That one there, yeah? Just there, but look. If you now look at this side, it's also going along and it must be feeding. For example, this one here goes in the middle. There you go, so you can see it going all the way along here. It then goes down, it travels along, doesn't it? it travels along and then probably drops out to here or here or possibly even here. Yeah, all right, okay. So now, let's just do a continuity test between these ones here and here. So if they're all getting to where they should be, then really there's not much that can be done to fix them. I suppose you can only clean them and make sure that there is continuity between them. And if there's not, then it means the chip itself is faulty. Right, so that one goes all the way up to here. So we can actually probably check all of them. This one's gonna go somewhere else up here. No. Okay, so that double backs onto here. And this one goes here. So every one of these is doing something they could do with a bit of a clean, but they don't look too bad. So now we have to check this side here. And at the same time, we can check to make sure that the solder is okay. In fact, what we can do is we can actually go, instead of just going between here and here, we can go on the other side of the leg of the chip and that eliminates then the solder joint here in case there's a dry solder joint that I can't see. Ah, 
Okay, so as I can see, they're all doing something. So there's gonna be nothing wrong with that, or the chip itself is gonna be faulty. There's, uh, there's no issue there with the soldering or anything like that. So what I'll do is let's get some isopropyl alcohol, and we'll just clean up the contacts on both sides with a little cotton bud, a Q-tip. Pretty dirty actually. Okay, now let's have a look at the actual case, see if that can be fixed up. These are the bits that push into the actual console to open up the flap. It's like a dust cover, and then when you push these in, it moves the dust cover out of the way to allow this to go in. Even they feel flimsy. Don't feel as good as the others. Oh, okay, I was gonna say I don't know which way to put them, but look, there's a little cutout here and here and two plastic posts. So it has to go that way because you can see the cutout and the cutout match there. So I can't actually put it in the wrong way. There you go, that's gone in very nicely there. So now where does that go here? Is that supposed to clip on? <laughs> there we go. Right, should we test that? Okay. Oh, that's not going in. Why is that not going in? I wonder whether these things are not strong enough to push down. Because on the rest they're rock hard. I wonder if they're not strong enough to open up the flap to allow that to open up. I presume that's what they do. Let me just get a screwdriver. Right, let me see now. Yeah, look, when you push that in there, that lifts up the flap. I mean, that opens up very easy. That's not going to take much force at all. There we go. We're in. Let me just see if that's bent up now. No, it's not. But we're not, we're not in now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's horrible. There we go. Right, let's see if it's going to do anything. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we have it. Right, okay, well, that's not particularly interesting because it was just a bent up car. Let's, uh, let's move straight on to one of the other ones and hopefully that will be a bit more entertaining. Now, I do want to see the inside of the others, but because I'm gonna do something destructive to them and they are old, I suppose it is worth just cleaning them first in case they're all just dirty. I'm hoping some of them might have trace damage or even maybe a chip that's faulty. I could try that resistor trick that we did on the, uh, the Mega Drive. The tip that came all the way from Brazil. Well, I'm just going to try that. Look at that. Looks lovely, doesn't it? But it's not working. But some of the pins must be doing something. So let's take this one apart. I'm hoping this might be more interesting than Ghostbusters. Okay, let's try to just gently cut around the hole. And while I'm doing this, let's give a shout out to the my mate Vince Massive. This month, the massive consists of kipdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeebs.com, King Curd from Low Book Auto Sales, DJ VG, and Tobias Hennig. There we go, I don't need to go all the way around. Hopefully that will, there we go. That will open up and expose the immaculate looking screws. Oh, 
what we got. Right, I'm going to leave that sticker on there. So, oh, look at this. Oh, these have little pushers in them. Look at that. Ah, uh, yeah, so that's how they... I wonder... Yeah, they just lock into place like so, don't they? Yeah, well, you can see it's the cartridge is much nicer than Ghostbusters. I wonder whether Ghostbusters was a later game. Let's have a quick look. I can see it's all wrinkly. I've seen that on the... The ColecoVision, that's where I've seen that before. Right, annoyingly, I don't think there's any trace damage on this one either. Unless it is dirt related, it does look dirtier. Right, let's do the same thing again. Meter in continuity mode. There we go, there's a problem here, I think. If I do that gently, it's not registering. I think that's a very dirty contact, because look, this one here, I can just tap it. Now, look at this one. I think that's, uh, I think that's quite oxidized. That might be the problem. Well, again, it all looks fine. So I think just dirty contacts. So in this one, if I just kept on scrubbing, I probably would have got it clean without taking it apart. But still, let's really go for it now. It's, it's easier to clean when it's like this anyway. And it's interesting to see the inside of the chip. The, uh, the board and stuff, the way it's laid out. Well, I might get a magic eraser on that, but I think that's pretty. Uh, I think that's pretty clean now. I reckon it was this second one here that was causing the causing the issue. In fact, on every single one, you can see where the pins from the Atari 2600 have been sat. Now, this one can be put in the wrong way. So now, let's just see if it is idiot proof. So can I close that there? Yes, I can. Let's try it the other way. Maybe this will stop it from closing. Yes, it will. Yeah, so it is... Uh, no, it won't. Ah, oh, that's annoying. So I'm gonna to have to watch the video back and see which way that went in because there's no, there's nothing stopping you from putting it in the wrong way. So it was like that there. So how am I gonna remember this now? The chip faces the label? Yeah, I suppose so, because when you put it in here, the uh, that's when you put it into the Atari, you read it the correct way. So the chip is facing the back of the Atari, facing the label here. Right, let me just try that. Turn it on. Let's see now. Did it do anything? Yes, there it is. Excellent. Why is there no sound though? Oh, there is sound. Ooh, a bit like Defender. Right, okay, that's uh, working as well. So again, it just needed a clean. Let's go on to the other two and see what's the issue with them. Now, we'll do this one because I think we'll leave this one till last because I can't feel any screws on that, so that might be very destructive. Let's, uh... do you know what? I am gonna just take it apart again because I cleaned the last one and you've seen that it still wasn't working and I don't wanna to put too much well, I suppose if you put a load of force down there, you could probably get it going. But again, I like to see the inside of them anyway. So I know I'm like, damaging the value of them. I don't really know how much these things cost anyway. I don't think there's a, they're a huge amount.
Oh, blob chip. Whoa, now I'm glad I took this apart. Blob chip. What? I was not expecting to see a blob chip. Now that is special. Not in a good way, in a bad way. Ah, do you know, I really wasn't ex expecting to see that. And we've got another component here as well. X, A, Y, I think. Oh no, A, V, X. Not sure what that is. Is that some little capacitor or resistor? Do not know. That's interesting. You can see how clean this one is. So I would say that this is probably going to be an issue with the blob chip, unless, of course, there's a tiny bit of tarnishing just here. There's looked to be a tiny hole just here in that blob chip. I wonder whether something's happened there, or is that just an imperfection from when it was made? Because that's just like some epoxy thing put on top of it to protect the delicate chip and wires underneath. Now, I'm not actually going to be able to test these because they go into the chip. But just having a close look, I can see that all the tracks are definitely intact. There's a line going across here, but nothing, uh, it hasn't even worn through the solder mask. I can test this one. Yeah, I can't see anything that could be wrong with that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on now. I've just got it completely out. I'm gonna put a lot of pressure down on the chip just to see if it does anything different. No. Nope. No, we have to give up on that one. I wonder if there's a way that I could dissolve that top stuff there to uncover what's underneath because probably what's happened is one of the wires might have just come adrift underneath there. Well I think before we mess with the chip let's just leave it alone for a minute just in case the inside of this is the same and I might be able to swap that component over. So now this one here. Super Cobra I used to have or my brother had the handheld game off that. That was a really good game. The joystick on that was lovely, little metal joystick. I bet it's the same one. You go up and over, well, you go this side of the screen in a some well, helicopter, and then you can drop bombs and do missiles, and you go over these blocks, up and that down. Uh, it was a good game. Well, I think that this is glued, which is annoying. Oh, uh oh, might have gotten away with that. Can I just get the inside out without having to take it apart any further? Yes, here we go. Okay, not too bad, not too much damage. Now, this has a little shield on it. Every one of these are just, to me, so interesting because they're just so different. Made in France. Parker Brothers. Yeah, Parker Brothers. Again, it just looks perfect. Maybe slightly oxidised, possibly. But at least there's a chip here now. But I'd have to unsolder these two tabs here in order to take the shield off. And this looks more like a capacitor. So maybe the other one was a capacitor. I wonder, is it feeding the same pins? might be able to work that out. Let's have a look. So where does it go? It goes down to that pin there and that goes to that pin there. So it must be doing the same thing. Then it goes across and it goes around to that pin that we can't get to. That goes there around here to 
here and then goes up into the chip so it could well be the same pin. Would it be worth just taking that capacitor out, swapping it for here just to see? I think we should. Then we definitely know it's the chip at fault. I'm not saying it's going to be the same capacitor, but maybe it would uh, maybe it would do the same job. Now, anything on here which doesn't look right? Solder feels iffy. It's kind of really bumpy. Yeah, solder's like bumpy everywhere. But I bet it's still making a contact. Let's go to continuity just while my iron is heating heating up. So just to speed things up a little bit in this video here, I've checked for continuity on every single wire, on every single pin, and on every single leg of the chip, and everything is getting to everywhere. So again, it's not a problem with the actual tracks or traces themselves. So what I'm doing here is taking the capacitor out of this one and putting it into Kung Fu Master just to see if it's gonna make any difference. If it doesn't, then we know that either both capacitors have failed or the chip is faulty. So uh, I think we can safely say that both capacitors are not gonna fail, but later on you do see me testing them anyway in my little component tester. So this part of the video here is just where I'm testing Kung Fu Master with the Super Cobra capacitor in the Atari 2600. No, exactly the same as before. So at least we know it's not capacitor related. No, okay. Right, let's try to uh, see what's happening with that other Super Cobra. I'm just putting the original capacitor back in here. Right, just because I'm not very happy with the joints down here, I'm just going to re reflow them all, add a new bit of solder to them, because as you can see, they just look a little bit, I'm sure they're fine, but they just look a little bit rough. But I don't think, that's well, I know that's not going to be causing a problem. But just in case it's not kind of making a good connection through the whole path, Yeah, it really seems to be bubbling up. Kind of strange. Look at that. What's going on there? I can hear it. That's weird, is it not? Yeah. Now, let me see if I can go zoom right in, show you what I mean. Unless it's just air trying to escape or something. But if you look, right, which one should we do? Let's do this one. All right, so watch this one. I'll try to add solder to it. See, it's puffing, look at that. What is that about? Unless is it uh, some leftover flux or something maybe that's just causing it to do that. Or could it be like conformal coating? Well, I'm just going to put it in like that and see if it's going to do anything different than before. No. Well, the contacts are completely clean. I suppose I could swap the, uh, the capacitor for the other one. just to rule out that. It's kind of strange how sometimes it does nothing and other times it will do a bit more. So this must be chip related as well, unless that capacitor's causing some sort of fault. Let's swap it over. Let's just make sure it's not shorted. 
No. Do you know what? I could put that in my component tester, couldn't I? The air capacitor, 132 nanofarad. 108 nanofarad, high ESR again, so I think that's normal. Is it going to do it this side around? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay, I'm just going to just see what happens now with this capacitor in here, but I can't see it making any difference at all. Now, normally the chip goes up this way, yeah? Not on this one. Look, that goes in perfectly like that. And when we unplug it, look at the orientation of the chip. Can you see? So in this one, the chip faces me. Come on, do something. Yeah, so it's kind of trying. Right, let me see if I can feel it getting warm at all. Nice green screen now. Can't feel any heat here at all. Anywhere. Obviously the chips failed. Let's see if we can get any readings using diode tests between ground and all the pins, just to see if any of them are open. Okay, so let's put it to diode test. Now I know obviously this works on the Mega Drive or Sega Genesis games, but uh, obviously I haven't got a clue whether it's going to work on something like this, but let's have a look. So I'm thinking that if I was to go to continuity here, I'm thinking that this is the ground, the big one that goes up to that side off the capacitor. And then from the capacitor here, then that's going to be the positive. Where does that go to there? So I think that that one would be the positive rail, that one there. Yeah. So let's go to diode test. And what I'm looking for is, so this is going to be, which is the ground again up here. Yeah, so you can see there, that's a ground. So with the Mega Drive, you're looking for anything that's different than the other. So that's a short there, so that's fine. 0.67, similar, similar. Bit different, but it's not that much different, do you know what I mean? So what I'm looking for is one that's just completely open. No good. Hoops up there for a second. Hmm. Thought it was an open one. Oh, come on. Two left. One left. No. Okay. Well, I have to give up on that one because we know that there's continuity between here and all the points here. We know that the capacitor itself is testing okay. Both of them, the one that I took out and this one here. So the only thing left that can be, you can see that there's no damage to them, they're fine. The only thing left is the chip, and I can't actually find anything that's open. So if there was an open one, I would have tried to go with a resistor between the ground, so for example here, and then the open one, and then that might have pulled it up or pulled it down, or however it works on the Sega Genesis. But no, it's a chip that's gone. It does happen sometimes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, somebody could program up a new one and put it on there. Realistically, though, I mean, I don't know how expensive these some of these games are, but I bought the whole job lot for, I think, 50-something pounds with all these games included. So I don't think these games have any real value to them. So it probably wouldn't be worth anybody's time reprogramming that. It might be as easy just to, just as cheap to uh, buy a new game, especially when you take into account your time. Oh, that's really unfortunate. So basically that 100% is a failure. Right, okay, so the only thing we've got left now is this chip. I'm just gonna have a Google to see if there's any way you can get rid of this epoxy. Right, it involves chemicals and I, I haven't got uh, I haven't got them. 
Uh, I did see a video on YouTube of somebody just using hot air and just a scalpel just to scrape it all away. It gets rid of all the bonding wires, but it does expose the chip on the inside. The chip looked pretty nice, so out of curiosity, I might just do that. Uh, the reason that I'm happy to completely break it is because, look, this is reading the same as the other one. If one of the bonding wires had gone, bearing in mind that, look, this is perfect. You can see there's no damage here apart from a little hole here. And if a hole's here, that's the chip that's failed, not a bonding wire. But... Uh, I'm still getting a reading across every single one. So again, this is the ground here. And if I just go across them, you can see that on every single one, I'm getting a reading. They're a different reading than the last chip, but you can see a lot of them are very similar. So if there was a few of them, or one of them, with nothing there, again, I would think, I believe this is also the ground here. I would, uh, let's just double check that. Yeah, uh, this one here's power. I uh, if, if there was a, one, one of them that wasn't given a reading, then I would think it may be a bonding wire, but it's not, is it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to heat it up and just scrape off the blob chip because this is junk anyway. This isn't going to be fixed, and I don't think I've done anything wrong. I don't think anybody could fix it because look how perfect it all is. You can see there's no damage there. So what, what is left? We've already proved that the capacitor wasn't faulty. So it's just the, the blob chip that's left. So let's have a little bit of fun with it and let's see what it looks like underneath. Here are all the pads. It's such a shame that wasn't just a regular chip. But mind you, the chip itself has failed, I'm certain of that. Yeah, look, you can see there's no damage or anything there. So here it is. And are they the uh, bonding wires? Yeah, they're the... Can you see those little silver? There's, there's one sticking out there. They're the bonding wires there. Ta-da! Oh, look at that. Let's go right in on that. So, you can see the chip here with the contacts around the edge. There is a hole here. Now, I wonder... I wonder would that have corresponded to... Let's have a think now. That was on there like that, wasn't it? Would that have corresponded to where the hole was in the chip? I think it probably was. It was around that area, wasn't it? Is that going all the way through there? Yeah, it's through that bit there, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that looks pretty, pretty nice. See these little, tiny little squares here? That must be where the wires go to. Absolutely tiny to think that that technology from 40 years ago. So what's pretty amazing is how small the chip is once you get rid of all the legs and everything like that. I'll be curious to see what's involved in these ones here. I suppose it's just, uh, it just doesn't need to be so small, does it? But that is super, super, super small. I'll be curious to see how many of the Atari games are on a blob chip or glob top or whatever they're called. So I had finished up that video and then I was packing this away and I looked in this bag and I found another game called Circus. Interestingly, this one is back to front and guess what? This is not working either. So when I put it in, it didn't work. Put it in a few more times and then eventually I got to this screen here. If I turn it off and turn it on again, it won't work. But Every now and then it does come up with this, but yet it doesn't actually do anything here. So when I press this here, actually, let me reset it. Now, if I, uh, see, so you can see it goes, oh, it's gone again. 
but basically it won't let me move across the screen so it will let me go up and down it won't let me go left to right so let me just turn it on and off until it starts working again here we go right now it lets me wiggle him up and down but I can't actually move it left or right Ah, oh, you just have to take my word for it. Anyway, you can see it's constantly cutting out there, so there's something seriously wrong with it. Now, interestingly, when we look in here, I can see what looks like a transistor. I can also see some resistors and a capacitor as well. So this looks like it's going to be different on the inside again. So out of all of them, this might be the most interesting one. So let's take it apart and see if we can get it working. A different layout again. But the contacts look clean and... The tracks all look clean, so what, what could be causing this? Because this is intermittent. Now I wonder, yeah, look, this is a sticker on here, and I think I can feel something underneath there. I wonder, is it one of these erasable ones, like a EEPROM? And they've put the sticker on there because the UV light can erase it. Possibly. I'm sure I can feel a window underneath there. So I took the transistor out, tested it in my component tester. It was testing fine as an NPN transistor. Gave it a clean, checked everything out with continuity and it all checked out good. Guess what was causing the problem where it wasn't moving across? <laughs> oh yes, I'll show you now. Right, I checked online and it all makes sense now. So I found a website called atariage.com and this has got the instructions for this game here. And look what it says. Use your standard paddle controllers with this Atari game. Paddle controllers, that's the reason it's not going left and right because it's looking for an input from a paddle, you know, with the little wheel that you turn left and right because I presume it's going to be a lot more playable with that because it's going to be more sensitive. You can get it to the right place rather than trying to hit the joystick left and right. So that's the reason why it's not working. But at least the game itself now is turning on and off. So this one just needed cleaning. If I turn it off and back on again, sometimes it can be a little bit noisy, but it is doing it now every single time. Let it, there you go, give it, give it a few more seconds and there you go. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see the game select whizzing by up top there. Right, so now I'm going to go back to the original video before I discovered this circus and I say that two out of four are working. Really, it's three out of five that are working and in each instance, two of them just needed cleaning and the other one just needed the, the game case reorganising. So uh, yeah, let's get back to the previous part of the video. Let's uh, end on a little bit of gameplay on one of the fixed games. Now this really, really reminds me of Defender. The map and everything at the bottom, it just looks the same, but just with different graphics. I can't seem to get those trucks. I've just had a thought, maybe, am I supposed to leave the white ones so that they can blow up the trucks? Yes, they must be on my side. Because that just blew up a truck. Right, let's, oh, whoops. I'll leave those ones. In fact, let me see if the score goes up when I blow one of them up. So I'm on 1400. Right, let's do that one. Oh no. Right, let's go back. 1500, I've got 100 points for that. But yeah, I've got no way then of blowing up those trucks. Ah, maybe the trucks are on my side didn't think about that. The trucks are probably on my side. Right, let's just blow everything up. Ah, there we go. Yeah, you are supposed to blow everything up. Right, okay. That's, uh, yeah, it's all right. It's okay. I don't think it would get a huge amount of use. I'll be honest, out of all of them, I think combat would still be a great couch player game if you and your friend was round then uh, I think you'd have a lot of fun with combat even in this day and age. Right, let's do a little bit of Ghostbusters. Now I messed around with Ghostbusters earlier and it took me ages to actually work out how to play it because you had to, uh, when I went to game select I bought all the items and then I was just stuck here and I was thinking how long is it going to take until I can do something. There was no other buttons to press until I worked out that you had to then press level difficulty, the switch, and then it would allow me back onto this screen. 
Now with this one, the objective is that I'm supposed to get Slimer. So I'm going to put him here and then the next one comes up. And then once I start firing, I can move that one that way, that one that way. So uh, let's get Slimer in the middle here. Start moving it in, moving it in. And now... Ah, oh, missed. Right, let me just uh, have one more go, see if I can get him. And although the tune is great, it sort of grates on you after uh, three or four minutes. Right, come on now, let's get him in. Oh, I've done it this way this time. Yes, got him. Let's just do a quick one here, see if I can get him. Nice and easy. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. See you soon, everyone.